Okay, so let's find a good spot to... Okay, this is risky. Camera in one hand. Okay, seems like a good spot. Let's set the exposure. Hey, what is up guys? So in this episode, I'm going to try out and see if the camera I'm shooting on, which is the Sony A7S 3 and I'm shooting in 4K 60, S-Log 2, XAVC HS 420, 10-bit. So it's kind of a demanding uh, codec, to be honest, and I'm gonna see if my iPad Pro from way back in 2018, not the 2020 iPad Pro, but the iPad Pro from 2018, can edit this footage and render it. So we're gonna see if uh, I can color grade it, um, if there are any hiccups, any stutters, how smooth the scrubbing is, and ultimately, if I can render this and upload this to YouTube, it'll just be a testament to how powerful and useful the iPad Pro still is uh, in 2020, the 2018 one. And the reason for this is because if you don't want to spend uh, a lot on getting a, a very or super powerful iPad, you can, you'll be at ease knowing that you can do all your editing work, video editing work on the iPad Pro even if it's from the 2018. So you'll be saving yourself a lot of money and still know that it can handle the codecs from the latest cameras just fine. So let's get into our editing flow. But before that, it's just so that I have more room to grade, I'm just gonna take a pan. I can see it focusing on my eye constantly. It's so sticky, it just doesn't let go. So right now I'm backlit. And uh, all right, so now let's go into Luma Fusion on my iPad Pro and let's see how this footage is handled. So just to give you guys proof before we begin that this is in fact the A7S III and uh, let me just show you that that's the A7S III and as you can see we are shooting in XAVC HS 4K 60 frames per second, 150 megabytes, 42010 bit and I'm going to go to play. And this is the clip that you're going to see that I'm going to edit on my iPad Pro from 2018. And as you can see, XAVC HS 4K 60P 150 420 10-bit. Okay, so I've got my iPad Pro 2018 set up here. Again, just to give you guys proof, uh, around this corner of the screen is where I'm going to uh, place the screen recording of my iPad Pro. So you can see as I'm doing and what I'm doing. So just to give you guys proof, I'm going to go into settings and we'll go into general, um, about, and as you can see, the model name is iPad Pro, third gen. So that's from 2018. So let's just close that. Now I'm going to open up LumaFusion. I've already transferred the clip to my iPad Pro. So we are going to start a new, uh, a new project and we'll name it testing A7S3. All right. Mm, sorry. So now I'm going to go into photos, videos. And here I have the video. So I'm just going to take the entire thing down here. So now because it is just a minute and 46 seconds. So let's just go all the way to the beginning. Let's zoom out. So I'm scrubbing and well, it seems to be okay. Let's just do a playback. Hey, what is up guys? So in this episode, I'm going to try out and see if the camera I'm shooting on, which is the Sony A7S 3 And even while I'm scrubbing, there seems to be no problem at all. So just to make it more taxing, uh, let me just take it to another track. I'm going to duplicate this four times. Okay, so now there are four tracks, 4K60. So now is when I think it is dropping a few frames, but let's see how the playback happens. 
Hey, what is up, guys? So in this episode, all right. So four tracks is where I think it's a bit too taxing for uh, this format. So if I remove one track, I'm gonna try out and see if. So three tracks: 4K 60, 420 10-bit, XAVC HS, which is H. Uh, uh, H.265 highly compressed so three tracks no problem four tracks is where is kind of the limit here all right so let me just go in and let us go into now you have some ready lots here already so I mean you can place it right away this straight away corrects whatever I want so uh, this is D vlog all right, so I'm just going to undo. Uh, let's rather go and do that manually. So say I want to increase the contrast like so. Reduce a bit of the highlights. Increase the shadows a bit. Add a bit of warmth. Mm -hmm. All right, and that seems to be about okay. Now for audio, uh, there's not much that I would want to do here. So now this is played, uh, this is applied to just the top clip and now I will copy that and paste it on the bottom one and the one below that. So now all three of these clips have been color graded and let's just play back. Hey, what is up, guys? No so problem. This episode, I'm going to try out and see. So, no problem at all. So, again, uh, we can just to, uh, just for the heck of it, duplicate. Let's just put this here. I'm just doubling the length. And all right, so now the whole timeline is around three minutes thirty two seconds. So you'll be at ease knowing that you can do all okay. I think it just doesn't let go. So right now I'm backlit. Seems to work just fine, which is pretty amazing. So the point I'm trying to make is that, the iPad is doing this, the iPad Pro 2018, it's doing this while it's also screen recording. So a part of the RAM is already busy recording whatever I'm doing on screen. And this is quite hefty, the work I'm doing right now on LumaFusion. By the way, I'm not sponsored by LumaFusion, but it is definitely the best uh, video editing app that you can get for your iPad. Uh, it's the closest to Final Cut Pro. And uh, for the past, uh, two years, uh, almost two years, every video that I've uploaded to my channel, I have been editing on this iPad and on my on Luma Fusion, and I've been uploading it directly from the iPad. So that just speaks a lot about how it's made my life easier and how powerful this device is. So, I mean, it's amazing. All right, so let's not do anything more. Uh, Let's just go to uh, export this movie, photos. So resolution is 4K. Uh, the frame rate is 30. Ah, I made a mistake there. Can we... Uh, we're gonna make it 60. Yeah, duplicate and change. Okay, so I forgot to make, uh, like when you make the project, you can choose the frame rate. I just set it to 30, I just remember. So now it's at 60. So now if we go to export this, as you can see, 4K, 60 frames per second. And because uh, LumaFusion now auto detects the bit rate. So as you can see, the video quality is at 150 megabits per second because that's what it was set to. And uh, the video codec is H.264, so it's going to 
transfer that and because I've, I'll be uploading this to YouTube, YouTube is yet to support uh, H.265. Although if you want, you can choose that, but we leave it to H.264, change nothing there. The estimated file size is 3.13 gigabytes and let us export and see how much time it takes. So the length of the clip is 3 minutes 32 seconds and it seems to be writing the movie. So let me just see how much time it takes to finish this and we'll get back to you guys once it's done rendering. So we just crossed uh, 1 minute 6 seconds so it's not really going at real time, a bit slower than real time. So yeah. So moving along, quite okay I would say. The reason I enjoy uh, working on the iPad Pro is definitely because of the factor of mobility and the fact that it handles all the projects that I do for YouTube so, so smooth. So, I mean, this is an extreme test. I wouldn't have so many tracks spawned out of the other when I'm making normal YouTube videos uh, for my channel. So this is just to check what's the limit. So usually for me, it's a maximum of two video tracks and an audio track or two, which is just fine for this machine. And it's handled, uh, and truth be told, I've actually rendered a 10 minute project with the same settings on the A7S3, A7S3 footage on the iPad Pro, this one, and that's already on YouTube. But I knew that many of you would actually want to see this beast in action. And my point of making this video is so that you guys don't rush to get, if, and this is for you, all of you guys who are definitely on a budget and you don't want to spend a lot or you can't spend a lot right now. So if you can't spend enough money to get yourself the new MacBook Pro with Apple's own silicon chip, or if you don't want to spend for the iPad Pro 2020 edition, the iPad Pro 2018 third gen, this one is definitely far cheaper right now. And if it can get your job done, even with a camera like the A7S III. So imagine the amount of money you'll be saving on the device you'll be editing on. It's portable, it's, it's super powerful, and it gets your job done. And that is exactly what matters. You don't need the bleeding edge of tech every year just to get your job done. If something like this from 2018 gets my job done so perfectly, why wouldn't, I mean, why would I invest in something right now? I mean, definitely I'm really eyeing the new uh, MacBook Pro with the M1 chip, but this, I mean, it's amazing that this, this, it's an iPad. It's not even a laptop. It's, it's got no fans, but it's the power of the A12X Bionic chip and it's phenomenal. So that is my point. That's the point I wanted to make making this video. And uh, once this footage you're seeing, this episode goes online, you will know that even this footage you're seeing right now will be put into the timeline on LumaFusion on this iPad. And then I'm going to make the final episode, which you're watching right now. It's all been edited on the iPad Pro. So while this was just a three minute, 32 second clip, this is going to be a far longer clip and a far longer episode, all edited on the iPad Pro third gen. I keep mentioning third gen because you might not believe it, but I mean, this, this device has just been phenomenal for me. So we are almost at the finish line, two seconds to go, and it's done. All right, so we are done. Uh, and if we go, here is guys. So in this episode, I'm going to try out and see if the camera I'm shooting on, which is the Sony. That's a perfect. So there you have it, guys. That was E7S3 footage, just a portion of the E7S3 footage that you saw being rendered in LumaFusion on the iPad Pro 3rd Gen from 2018 and it's just fine. And this episode, which you're watching right now, again, like I said, is completely shot on the A7S III and edited completely on the iPad Pro 3rd Gen, this one. So 
it handles it like a beast no problem at all unless you saw what's the upper limit and for normal day-to-day -day youtube videos you wouldn't want to go that extreme but the fact is this device gets your job done it's as professional as you could probably want it for youtube videos and well yeah i hope this gives you an idea of how powerful these are even in 2020 and i hope this will make you save some money and make the right investment decision in the near future and not immediately so thank you so much for watching i hope you found this helpful if you did please share this video hit like subscribe to prcast 9 and as always i will catch you guys in the next one cheers